In this video you'll see what happened when I took an RC plane and upgraded it to see how fast I could get it to fly through adding bigger batteries, changing its aerodynamics and adding a powerful rocket boost that could be activated at the flick of a switch. If you've been watching the channel for a while you'll know I've built a couple of rocket powered planes before, but this time I wanted to try something a bit different. Thanks to my Patreon supporters I got myself an off the shelf model jet powered by a small internal electric ducted fan. Although only designed for speeds around 50 miles an hour, I believe that this aeroplane with some extreme modifications could actually beat some of the fastest foam RC jets out there, and maybe even beat the very fastest, which claim to fly at an eye-watering 140 miles an hour. So why did I think that this plane had that potential? Well, first of all, it's very small and lightweight, and also very aerodynamic, so through making it much more powerful, it should be able to reach some higher speeds. I've never successfully flown a plane faster than a 114 miles an hour. So my goals for this project would be twofold. One, I wanted to set a new personal airspeed record of over 114 miles an hour. And two, I wanted to make this plane the fastest foam jet in the world. Yeah. This is uh, quite an ambitious project. So how would I make this aeroplane fly 140 miles an hour? I thought I could modify the electric powertrain of the jet to get it up to a speed of around 100 miles an hour. Then I could kick in a solid rocket booster to boost the plane to speeds hopefully over that 140 miles an hour target. Would I be able to do this or would this all be much harder than I originally thought? I started by assembling the T-33 completely stock to see what its out of the box speed would be so that we'd have a benchmark. I chose the T-33 for its small frontal area and 80mm wingspan as it made for a great starting point with it being very aerodynamic. The problem though was that this plane comes with a very underpowered fan which is only 50mm across meaning to move air quick enough to get this plane flying pretty fast it would have to spin round very quickly indeed but with the recommended battery it wouldn't produce much thrust. I could find a way to use a higher voltage battery later on to give the fan a few more beans. But for now I just wanted to fly the plane as its makers intended to see what we were working with. Right, chocks away. Okay, feels a bit nose heavy. But yes, it's up in the air, look at that. Let's go for a low pass here, full throttle and see what it can do. Alright, not sure how fast that was but uh, we'll try again. I really don't want to bin this because I've only got one jet and it could all go wrong at a moment's notice. I don't know, I mean I'm thinking that's probably about 40 miles an hour. <laughs> so we've got a bit of a way to go. I'm a bit out of practice with flying planes like this. Okay, I'll probably land it before I do something silly. So uh, tally ho, let's come in for a landing. Ooh. It didn't feel particularly fast, but let's see how fast it actually was with the GPS. Ah, 90 kilometers an hour. So what's that? About 50 miles an hour, I think. Got a bit of a way to go. So that's the benchmark. Now back to the workshop to do some upgrades. The problem that I needed to solve first was how to get the most out of that 50 millimeter fan. As previously mentioned, the recommended battery for this plane, which was a three cell 11.1 lithium polymer pack, couldn't really get the most out of this motor, which could handle up to 16 or 17 volts. The issue with using a more powerful battery though was that the electronic speed controller supplied with the T33 was absolutely tiny. This thing regulates how much power gets sent to the motor and if it's too small, it could actually set on fire if there's too much current being drawn. I thought it would be safer to use a much larger speed controller. Now I could test the motor at full throttle for an extended period of time to see if any of the electronics got hot. With the ducted fan, helpfully the airflow goes directly over the can of the motor which helps to keep it cool. That feels acceptable. So it looks like we can keep this on full throttle for two or three minutes without it melting. So the next problem was how to keep the plane nice and stable while traveling at higher and higher speeds. This plane is fitted with a gyro which is an electronic component that helps to keep an RC aircraft nice and stable. When switched on it works by using accelerometers to detect the angle of the plane and automatically adjust the control surfaces to force the plane into a, a nice neutral straight and level attitude. I reassembled the T-33 with one of these gyros installed and then headed out for a second test flight.
The stabilization system functioned well, automatically compensating for this slightly turbulent air at higher altitudes. Now to bring it in for a safe landing and check the GPS. Okay, let's see what the speed was this time. 137. So it's uh, quite an improvement. Okay, it's finally time to do something a bit more drastic with the aeroplane. I was thinking originally to get the thrust line of the rocket engines correct, to put the motors inside where the exhaust tube for the EDF is. I was thinking about moving the EDF onto the wing, or maybe having like two of them on, on the wings either side. But I think for this project, it would be a lot simpler if I just remove the vertical stabilizer here and put the engines sort of like that. Obviously I'm going to need to take the center of gravity into account with having heavy rocket engines on the end of here and also they're going to burn their fuel and get lighter over time. So I need to make sure that that stability margin is correct. Also, I've got some quite large motors that I want to test on this aeroplane. So it needs to be able to handle a range of different sizes and a range of different masses of these motors. So that's going to affect the CG as well. I began by removing the old vertical stabilizer and cut out two new twin stabilizers from foam board, which is a favourite material of mine for building model aircraft. I made sure that these surfaces had a similar area to the old single vertical stabiliser to provide a similar amount of directional stability on the yaw axis. The next problem was how to keep this thing visible in the sky as it rapidly travels away from me standing on the ground. This meant that it was time to break out my favourite orange spray paint and give the entire airframe a few decent bright coats. Hopefully Chuck Yeager would approve. Now I could turn my attention to how I'd ignite a rocket engine remote mid-air. This would be done through using a second electronic speed controller hooked up to a second battery. This was wired up so that it would dump power directly into an electronic rocket engine igniter at the flick of a switch on my transmitter. Whoa! <laughs> Yes, that works. I hope this doesn't set the fire alarm off. <laughs> but what about the rocket engines? Where would I get those from and how powerful would they be? Well, as you might already know, model rocket engines are readily available for purchase for the hobby of model rocketry. They burn a solid propellant and come in a range of sizes and power ratings. I chose two to use on the next couple of test flights. The first one was a D-size engine made by Estes with a two second burn time and no ejection charge for a parachute or anything. The second engine I chose to use was an F-size engine made by TSP, which has about four times the power of the smaller Estes engine with a similar burn time and also doesn't have an ejection charge or anything like that for a parachute. I needed to make a motor mount that would fit the two engines and decided that the easiest and lightest solution was to probably just use an old cardboard tube, which was very DIY. So I just cut that to size and then designed and printed an aerodynamic nose cone to go on the end on my CAD software on my computer and then printed it on one of my old Ender 3 3D printers. Then I could glue this onto the tube and then glue the whole assembly securely with a little guide vane onto the rear of the plane, being super, super careful to ensure that its angle was bob on. However, through mounting the engine on top of the airframe in this particular location, I'd be introducing another problem. Problem. If the centre of thrust is too high on an aeroplane, it can cause the aircraft to pitch down. This is because the centre of thrust will be above the centre of gravity, which is the point of rotation on the aeroplane. The higher the centre of thrust above the centre of gravity, the more pronounced this effect will be. To counter these effects though, the engine can be rotated downwards to push through the centre of gravity. So we've got a few degrees of down sort of angle on the engine so that the thrust line will be pointing downwards. Whether this would work and how dramatic this pitch down might be if it didn't work, I'd only find out through my next test flight. Now on the home stretch, I just needed to finish up the wiring and installing the ignition system in place and then fine tune the centre of gravity range on the aircraft to make sure that this plane would still fly when the fuel had run out, which would shift the centre of gravity further towards the nose. Right, time for some rocket powered test flights, but before driving up to the flying field, it's time for a very quick ad from PayPal Honey. Honey automatically searches thousands of websites online for promo codes. This little button at the top of your browser is the number one shopping tool in America. It probably works on all of your favorite websites that you already use. So this is a great free add-on to add to your web browser so that you can make savings on stuff that you already buy. If I were to go onto an online store to buy parts for my projects, Honey would automatically look for coupons. It's a nice feeling when you save money, so yeah, 
go and get it, go and download it for free. You can add it to your browser for free at joinhoney.com slash project air. All right, we're, we're actually going out the car park now, so I'm gonna put the camera away. <laughs> right, let's go to the flying field. When I got to the flying field, the weather had taken a bit of a foul turn. It's a bit breezy and it's extremely cold today, but it's the best day that we had this over the next couple of weeks, really. The first test flight is just with the EDF alone, not with any of the uh, rocket engines, because I want to test the aerodynamics. I've changed the tail. I, uh, I've also removed the canopy. Uh, so yes, we want to see if anything goes awry with the aeroplane just as is. <laughs> Okay, so we're up in the air and uh, yes, we'll just do a couple of high speed runs just to see what top speed is. Okay, coming in for a landing. Whoa, okay, I had to abort there. The wind direction seemed to change at the last minute, so uh, I'm just going to come around again. <laughs> Did you see that? I had to run out of the way of it. Right, let's see what the speed was. So it didn't feel very fast, but I was going into the wind. So 106, so that's, yeah, it's not hardly anything. So only 106 kilometers an hour there, so that's about 60 something miles an hour. So yeah, it's not very, not very good, but I couldn't really get it lined up into the wind. Next, it was time to install the smaller of the two rocket engines, the D-size engine, and then try my best to install the igniters with practically frozen fingers. It's very cold. Obviously, we've got the engine up high here. As we've discussed previously, not really sure how much the uh, the aircraft is going to pitch down when I kick in the, en the rocket engine. So that's one thing that could go wrong. Another thing that could go wrong is the structural integrity of the aeroplane. This plane is obviously made of foam and if it starts twisting, will it disintegrate? Not sure, but that's what this test is all about. What we learn from this will go into the next aeroplane. <laughs> So I'm not going to hang around, I'm going to get it up to altitude, turn the nose around and then I'm going to engage the rocket engine. So let's see if I can pull that nose around. Three, two, one, fire! Four. Oh, I think we lost the engine just there. The rocket engine seemed to eject itself. That definitely seemed to give us a bit of a boost. Let's bring it in for a landing and we'll see how fast it went. It feels very nose heavy now because it's lost the engine. Okay, bring it in. I'm gonna have to keep the airspeed up. Oh, oh dear. Let's see what's, uh, what the speed was. 142, what's that then? Uh, it's about 90 miles an hour, something like that. Not quite 100 yet though, so that worked very well. I think we got it on camera, which is the main thing. The engine ejected from the back of the aircraft. The plane became very, very heavy all of a sudden. I don't know why it ejected, because it doesn't have an ejection charge on this particular D-sized rocket engine that we were using. Apart from landing in a load of poo over there, <laughs> from the, the manure on the field. That was a completely successful mission. When the plane did uh, engage that engine, it did nose down a bit, but I think the, uh, I didn't really do anything. The, the plane corrected itself. Yeah, that gives me hope that the bigger engine is, is also going to be fine. So uh, yeah, let's crack on with it. Next up was the largest rocket engine, the F size, which was about four times as powerful as the previous D size engine. Tally ho. <laughs> I think because the plane's so heavy now, it is having a hard time actually staying airborne uh, and getting enough air spe speed. I didn't want to use up too much of my battery, having to use full throttle to simply keep the plane in the air. So immediately I lined up for a high speed run. Getting up the ground speed, coming across, and then three, two, one, fire! Four. Bringing those round again. 
Oh, I think the engine just fell out again. So I'm going to try and bring it home. It's going to be extremely nose heavy now, so I'm going to have to bring it in for a very high speed landing to avoid stalling. Coming in. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yes! We did it! Oh, we've uh, landed in some more poo. Engine has completely disappeared. 211 kilometers an hour. 211 kilometers an hour. Right, so we didn't quite crack that 140 miles an hour barrier that time, but with a few more modifications, I think that this plane has more than enough capability to go through that speed barrier and go a bit faster than that even. Interestingly, this gyro wobbling problem was very similar to the problem that we saw with my Mark 1 jet car from last year, where the car got into a bit of an oscillation at about 70 miles an hour through trying to overcorrect itself from one way to another. So this was very similar, although with the aeroplane it was on the roll axis. So next is to tune the gyro and yeah, sort that out. Also a few things that held me back on that flight were, you know, uh, easy things to fix, such as the drag from the camera that was on the wing. I didn't quite get time to build a sort of aeropod for that camera or use a, or get a smaller camera and use that instead. But I think next time I'll be able to sort of bury that camera into the wing or, or something to that effect so we can reduce some drag. And you know, if I hadn't actually got a camera on there, if I wasn't filming this, perhaps we would have gone nine miles an hour faster and yeah, hit that 140 miles an hour target. So I'm not done yet. If you've been following me on Instagram, then you'll probably know that I I've started work on my biggest project for this year, probably, uh, probably the biggest project for this year, which is my version two jet car. This is a super ambitious build and I've, yeah, really gone to town with the design. It's going to be built out of all sorts of things, uh, which are a bit expensive. So thanks again to you Patreons for helping me to to yeah to fund that project if you'd like to support me and to help fund those kind of projects those bigger builds on this project air youtube channel then click the link in the description thanks again to honey for sponsoring this video and i'll see all of you lots on the next one here's another video for you to watch in the meantime see you on the next one cheers